so right now to bring you up to date with where we're at on it, uh, you can see our cutouts and whatnot, and we're kind of just getting everything rough draft and starting the interior design layouts in our heads and knowing where the cabinetry is going to be and the water heater, batteries, propane tank, that type of stuff. So you can see if you come up right now, uh, we basically have on our front here, this is just a pilot hole of where our exit door for the Thetford toilet's going to be so that we have basically the square door and your entire cassette's going to pull out of there and then we have the door from Thetford that's a nice insulated door that closes. And uh, none of these are obviously in place yet. We haven't obviously done the file on or anything yet, but uh, just for getting layouts again, like I said, we've got our water here. You have your gravity fill, fresh water tank, city water hookup that. And um, from here we have it, it's gonna be going into the camper and it, on the bottom portion of a closet here, we have our fill hose that goes down through the closet and then down and into our 45 gallon tank that's on the belly of the truck. Mm. So we got our water heater here. We went with the original six gallon uh, propane water heater. We are gonna have propane on board for the water heater as well as the oven and range that we're putting in it, which we'll get to another exciting new update for the build. And then moving further back on the back of the camper, uh, this is gonna be our propane door here. We do have, I don't remember the size of it, but it's a good size propane tank. It's a bit bigger than your barbecue grill tank. And this was initially about right here and it goes right under the rear uh, seat in the dinette. But we did with the redesign on the fuel, had to move the propane a little bit more forward. And then we have our fuel fillers here, which we'll also be going to here uh, in a minute, more in the video. But continuing on, you can see since the last video, uh, we were just starting up framing on our rear wall. And now, as you can see, we got it framed and it's been covered and um, primed and filled in. And that's pretty much also ready to get your file on on the rear wall there. And so of course, you can see as we announced previously, we have the um, outdoor accessory shower if it's needed. And um, these are all just temporarily put here, the fuel lines for our fuel system. So for the fuel tanks, we did do the custom secondary fuel tank since the onboard uh, fuel tank of the Toyota is pretty small. It's, I think it was like an 18 or 19 gallon that this truck came with. Mm -hmm. And this company did reuse the factory Toyota tank, but they obviously relocated it to the rear of the vehicle. And the way they had it before, we have it in the same spot, but the fill nozzle was like basically above the rear bumper, which got pretty annoying. And when you're refilling, you had to pull the vehicle like really far forward relative to the location of the pump. And at some smaller gas stations, that was like almost sticking out in the road or blocking other people from pulling out. So when we did the secondary auxiliary fuel tank install, we also went ahead and redesigned the uh, fill valves, as you can see here. And I'm gonna go ahead and let dad show you those since this was his uh, design on all this. So we'll go ahead and get to that. All right, so what we did was, um, like Anthony said, mainly because this thing only came with a 17 gallon tank, went ahead and put another tank in for two reasons. One, so if you wanna extend your range. Uh, another reason is if you have a motorcycle or something like that you wanna fill up, you've got an auxiliary tank that you could run a different fuel or whatever in it. So what we did was we changed from the filler necks that used to be low, or filler neck that used to be located in the back. We've moved them to the side, makes it easier if you got a motorcycle or whatever on the back, or if you're getting gas somewhere, has a short hose, you can't reach the center. So what we got here is we've got the, this is the original, this goes to the original tank, which is I believe 17, 18 gallons. And this one here fills the auxiliary tank, which is 15 gallons. This switch right here, switches to where you can either fill through these lines an auxiliary motorcycle or another gas can. It's in the off position now. If you move it over, you're in auxiliary one, which like I said, you can use to fill an auxiliary tank, or you can go two and you can refill the existing tank from the auxiliary tank. So it'll give you more range if you're out on the road. We will have a new gas door made for it. And when we build a bumper, we're probably gonna do something that comes around the corner a little bit just to protect that in case it were ever hit, just to give it a little bit more. So with dad's ingenious fuel design here, we'll go ahead and show you the inside now and what's going on on the inside of the truck just so you can see how things were routed and a few uh, fail safe safety steps he threw in place when you're obviously having fuel and whatnot inside the vehicle with vapors and stuff like that. So let's go check it out. 
All right, as we showed you from the outside, the auxiliary um, main and off switch, this is the back side of it. And since it was inside of the motorhome, which this will all be sealed off, I went ahead and made a box and with this plate on, the box is sealed, but this is the switch itself. You'll have three lines, you'll have a one inlet, and then you'll have an auxiliary out one and an auxiliary out two, which will enable you, like we had said before, to either refill uh, auxiliary tank or to refill your own tank. Um, and because this is inside of the motorhome, what I did was I went ahead and put another port down here. And again, this will be sealed with the cover on it to where if you either have a leak in your hose or if the valve goes bad, it will go out this line right here, which will dump under the motorhome, which you'll see. This right here is chased in a, in a galvanized steel, which will be sealed off to stop rats or whatever from getting underneath. But also if there were leaks somewhere here, um, it will allow it to drain out there without getting any of this wet. When we're done, I will make a metal floor to go in this area, just as a, another precaution. Um, these lines here, the only rubber actually inside the vehicle are just these short necks, and this is not radiator hose. This hose is filler neck hose, which is actually very expensive. So you really don't have to worry about any leakage in here for many, many, many years. But we will go ahead, like I said before, and seal this off to where even if this here does not work as a safety, at least if this area gets wet, it won't soak into the wood. This is a red neck stripper pole. So an important part of this build you can see here is a stripper pole we put right in the center because you just you still have to have fun when you're out on the road. But it's actually just here to just in case to give a little structural integrity right to the top center of the roof where uh, sagging would basically want to begin. But um, obviously it's just temporary. We're gonna be getting all of the structural integrity for the roof from the cabinetry and the bathroom wall that's coming all the way out here and the closet and all that stuff that basically gets tied in from the entire height of the roof all the way down to the floor are really gonna be giving that roof all the integrity it needs on this side as well where I have cabinets and uh, everything else and the rear dinette's gonna have a little wall separator back here and everything. So now today we're pretty much getting ready to start the floor install. We decided to go with an all natural marmoleum flooring from the company, uh, I think it's called Forbo. And it's really nice stuff. It's obviously all natural, so you don't have to worry about any off gassing or anything in these small spaces like the camper where that actually is something you have to take into consideration when you start thinking about flooring and adhesives and uh, foam insulations and stuff like that. So the floor comes in a width of 79 inches wide, which is basically ex almost the exact width. We are gonna have to do some trimming, so we're about to start measuring it out and deciding um, a template and everything. But as far as where it's gonna go, we're just gonna have to cut around the fender wells and a little bit around the fuel location. And then we're gonna have some overlay on the front cab area. And then that's pretty much it. Hey guys, so now we got everything marked up on our template for sizing on the flooring as far as everything we're going around in the camper on the floor. Um, pretty much everything that is there in the camper that the flooring meets is all going to be covered by some type of either cabinetry or whatever else. So we have most of our measurements pretty approximate to where they need to be, but ultimately they'll all be covered and hidden anyways, being under cabinets and whatnot. But we still have our template all out and we're gonna get it cut out of place and get it ready to go in and dropped in the camper. So I'll show you what we have here. We went with the Forbo Marnoleum flooring. It's like an all natural um, linoleum. And this, if I remember right, is they call it a dove gray. And you can see the color of it. I, I picked this because it's a nice neutral color and I think it will go with a lot of uh, different designs and color schemes for whatever I go with or like future owners of this vehicle they hopefully won't hate it and it's a really nice floor like I said before it's all natural and uh, it's got a little bit I think it's like a two millimeter thickness on it and it's got like a nice sound deadening property to it and uh, yeah we're excited to get it in there and it's gonna be neat seeing one of the first um, pieces of the build that's gonna actually be the exposed piece of a finished build so we're gonna cut this down into shape for now rough shape and uh, go from there. And then once it's ready to go in the truck, we lay it out and got the adhesives for it ready to go. All right, guys, so now you can see we pretty much have everything all marked out. We've tripled measured everything to just make sure um, we've left our clearance for 
the uh, our molium, it shrinks and expands in certain directions, so we give ourselves some play for that. We've got the front, and that's the bathroom, the step, the fender walls, and everything. So let's go ahead and start cutting it out. pretty good you guys adds a lot of brightness in here as you can see it feels a little homier already all our measurements came out pretty much exactly where we wanted them they look good everything nice around our filler neck around here that we had to cut around so got a little trimming to do up front there on the pass-through so here we are with day two on the floor. We've got it all cut to shape and ready to go down and now we're ready to do a final cleanup and then we're gonna lay some adhesive. We've got the adhesive, well, I guess I don't have it here. We've got the adhesive that is recommended for this marmoleum flooring. It's a Forbo 1195. So we'll see how that works out. We're applying it with, they recommend a 1 16th inch square notch trawl. And uh, yeah, that's it, so let's get to it. So that pretty much wraps up this video and another portion of the Toyota build. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, enjoyed seeing the truck continue to come together as much as I've enjoyed seeing it and my dad and all of us. And uh, the floor is in, it's adhered down and we're now beginning framing out the interior. We're gonna start with the bathroom and frame out the bathroom and kind of go from there and hopefully chug right through it and get into doing our electrical system and we'll be putting our file on on again soon when the weather conditions are um, appropriate for it so thanks for watching and take it easy guys